But I'm not gonna let that happen. I will hold you here. Yes. I will keep you here. No matter how many times they burn us. Keep here and don't be scratchy. And I am remade. Five Nights at Freddy's has a lot of scenes, cutscenes, and moments that are disturbing or impactful to the story. A few examples of these include the Springlock scene in Their Happiest Day in FNAF 3, the bite of FNAF 4, Sis locations ended in Michael reveal, the private room and Springtrap's return, FNAF 6 insanity ending, Charlie's death and the true ending, FNAF help wanted sealed ending, security breaches, um, uh, uh, everything that happens in the books, J Jesus. <laughs> There are a lot of scenes in the FNAF series that, when you delve deep into, you can find a lot of the sad, unfair truth of the story. There is one scene that I've been looking into for a while. In Ultimate Custom Night, there are cutscenes that play after you reach a certain amount of points. These stem from High School Chica to Samurai Freddy and Foxy, I have no idea what the fuck any of these mean. But there is a scene that plays roughly at the end of the game, once you reach over 10,000 points. As you've seen at the beginning of the video, I played a little snippet of what this cutscene is. So, what does any of this mean? What am I going to talk about in this video? Well, Golden Freddy. Golden Freddy was a, one of FNAF's first mysteries. Oh shit, the sniper's in this one. What the fuck? What, what? Are, you, what are you doing? What are you- what are you ghost running, bro. What are you doing in my video? Huh? Playing- what? Get out! Well, you're in my house! I'm not- what? No! I'm, oh, I am! I didn't, I didn't real fuck, I'm sorry. I, I didn't oh, I- oh, this is- this is awkward. You're fucking up my level, come on. Golden Freddy, one of FNAF's first big mysteries. His ghostly appearance, lack of movement, mechanic in-game, and unique jump scare really made the yellow bear an odd one out of the group. He reappeared in FNAF 2 as one of the final enemy additions, and it seems like his strange mechanic of suddenly appearing in your room, slumped over, and jump scare just being his head, just like the first game, although... What is that? He would then constantly make appearances in the series. Always the same stumped over creepy fella. The st Fuck. You got me- You- <laughs> Damn it, Cassie! Who for the longest time was just paired with the other four as the missing children incident gain. Then the bite happened, and then there was a bit of confusion of who he was, and that's still going on today, believe it or not. Is he a physical suit or a spiritual one? Either way, Golden Freddy is unique in his mystery. He was- Different, but after FNAF 4 and the story shift of this location, focusing on a whole other half of the story, it seems like our five missing children had their ending. I mean, they were set free in FNAF 3. With them having their happiest day, Golden Freddy finally experiences their birthday. Their balloons fly up and all of them get set free. But Golden Freddy wanted an after party. Enter Ultimate Custom Night, released on the 27th of June 2018. This custom night was advertised as Scott's official final game, at the time supposedly. Everyone from all the previous games all in one place. It was designed as a final send-off to nearly five years worth of work. One final bang until passing off the torch, as the teasers kept on coming in and updates kept on coming. Yeah, no one ever expected this game to have any amounts of lore. Maybe hints from character dialogue, but nothing to where this game itself would be in the continuity of the game's timeline. Well, except for one character that made the whole thing possible. When Ultimate Custom Night released, we got to hear a lot of voices from previous characters, and honestly, that was one of the coolest parts of Ultimate Custom Night. Seeing all these famous beloved faces and giving them so much voices and character, which is simply amazing. Big departments were the nightmares, all of them got their chance to shine. But besides the point, once you die to a few of them, and trust me, you will die a lot, you start to feel this sense of unease, when some of the characters, specifically the Nightmares, some FNAF 2 characters and anomalies like the Mediocre Melodies, start to mention something very specific. It seems that our character we're playing as in Ultimate Custom Night has committed several mistakes or sins in our past lives, in the fact that they bring up The one you shouldn't have killed. The one you shouldn't have killed. By the one you should not have killed. With that line alone, it tells us all we need to know. It seems like the character we play as in Ultimate Custom Night is none other than the main antagonist of the entire series. <laughs> 
William Afton. Now that we know that our character seems to be in a purgatory state, and you know, rightfully so, it leads us all with one question. The one we shouldn't have killed? Who could that possibly be? I mean, as the main killer of the franchise, who was one that was so special that it decided that grabbing every monster we have created and releasing them all at once to kill us over and over and over and over again? I must say, it's pretty poetic. If William Afton didn't go on his reign of terror throughout his Fazbear killing career, then none of these monsters would have ever been created. So in our hands, we have killed dozens upon dozens upon dozens upon dozens upon dozens, etc, etc. It keeps on adding up. Even if it's not by Afton himself, it was a butterfly effect, one inflicted on a select few. But then one that I let bleed out to cause all of this. It's pretty scary to think that how much suffering pain, how much one has caused countless people to cry, wimp and scream, the loneliness, the sorrow, it's only deserved that the man who caused all of this, before he truly suffers for all eternity, he faces the monsters he's created all at once. So let's get back to the question, who is this one? The spirit who is keeping us here and essentially all of Afton's creations, during the game of UCN, we are giving very little on who exactly it is, unless you do a bit of digging. There are three instances where we get information of who this ventral spirit is. First of all, this face that constantly shows up everywhere in the game, smiling, watching us. It gets front row seats to all the madness. Whatever or whoever the spirit is, it has been waiting for a long time for this moment. One of these instances require you to purchase the death coin, which is a coin that essentially permanently removes a character from the roster, unless a very slim chance of... No, no, no! No! Another one of these instances require you to set Old Man Consequences AI level to 1, where when you catch his fish, the player, or a version of Freddy, gets transported to his lake, where if you interact with him, he'll tell you, and I quote, Come and sit with me a while. Leave the demon to his demons. Rest your own soul. There is nothing else. We then head over to the lake. We proceed to drown, but instead of a painful drown, it's almost cleansing as the consequence red washes off us and a heavenly white engulfs us. Now I want to come back to the scene because I feel like it will become more important when I talk about it later. I, I think that made sense. Jesus, the script is ass. The second instance requires you to have the death coin, which I mentioned earlier. Where if you set Gold Freddy's AI level to 1 and use the death coin on him, we get our first true clue of who this the one you should not have killed is. Instead of removing him, he will essentially remove you. <laughs> Golden Freddy, or Fredbear, kills us, just like the rest meaning Golden Freddy is unkillable during Ultimate Custom Night. So our bet is on Golden Freddy being the one that William should not have killed, right? Well, this final cutscene confirms our beliefs, but before I get into that, I want to bring up the Fredbear jump scare, and what I think it means. Now, no, I do not think this Fredbear we see is what a physical Fredbear looks like in the story. I believe it's supposed to be more representative of something else, which explains why it's so similar to FNAF 1's Golden Freddy design, which again I'll explain later on in the video. The final instance slash cutscene is when we get a score above 10,000. Once we reach the score of over 10,000, this cutscene will play. Now this cutscene I want to explain because it's basically the whole purpose of this video, because the story behind it, if you look into it, and the cutscene itself, wow, it is terrifying, but also bittersweet. Dark, but compelling. Now, one final note before I show it. This was intended to be the final thing that was shown from the series. The last thing that Scott gave us in these games, at least at the time. But without further ado, here it is. Okay, let me explain. So the cutscene itself wasn't really much. Golden Freddy stares at the camera and fades out? That's it, right? Well, 
at least we know who this one we should not have killed is. But Golden Freddy? What makes him so important? Especially now. Well, let me get to the explaining bit, okay? So there are two ways you can dissect this. You can either look at it from a timeline, i.e. the story of within FNAF, or the story of the outside view of the series, i.e. the community experiencing the cutscene in 2018. But I'm going to explain both because I feel like it's a little bit more impactful. So to begin with, Golden Freddy was killed on his birthday, hence why he is this considered this vengeful spirit, okay? Explains why Custom Night is a thing in the first place, okay? Golden Freddy wanted one final laugh before it all ends. Simple. Now getting back to the old man consequences scene, I believe that this scene happens directly before the void scene, where Golden Freddy is ready to let go and drowns. It then plays this cutscene, with Golden Freddy seemingly fading away, accepting and moving on. Drowning. Notice how the eyes don't stay with? Everything completely fades away, as the tragedies of Freddy Fazbear's Pizza have finally laid to rest. Now I want to pose an interesting question. What is Golden Freddy's POV during this scene? What has he seen? Well, wouldn't it be poetic if FNAF's first big mystery, the Yellow Bear, Fred Bear, the first ever thing that started this descent into madness, is staring directly at none other than leaving the demon to his demons. William, or Springtrap, or Spring Bonnie, the yellow rabbit fading out with Golden Freddy in sync. The first two creations that would bleed out into all of this come full circle at the end of it all. The first of a sign of tragedies and suffering these golden suits hold, now being the ones to put it to rest. At the time, Golden Freddy fading out is theoretically Scott saying, hey, this story, it's over now. FNAF's first big mystery now being its last, shows that the horror, the screams, the voices, the sorrow, the cries, now finally peacefully fade out. The tragedies, the mystery, everything is gone, settled, faded out. One more struck of gold before finally nothing. And when the cutscene ends, the game doesn't crash. Like all the Golden Freddy appearances, it simply just boots you back to the title screen. There is no more mystery to theorize about. There is no story to be told, because that was the end. Now I hope that when you look back at this cutscene, you'll know that it's haunting, it's heartbreaking, but also it's sweet. The stories of Freddy's not ending in a blaze of glory, but fading out into the darkness finally forgotten about, was the perfect way to go out. Knowing that everything is at peace. It's peace as in completion, but also silence. Again, no more story, no more mystery, no more secrets, no twists, no fear, no worries. A void. Hey yo, it's me again. Uh, it's a bit late. Um, I was planning on getting this video done much earlier, but, you know, motivation blocks and just, it was taking a toll on me. But, you know, I'm glad you all enjoy it. I'm really happy doing these types of new videos. It's really branching out my ideas and all that. I want to give a huge thank you to Cassie Polt, which, uh, if you know her, she's a good friend of mine, and she was there when I was recording lines for this video and that's why I messed up so much times this script was not like to my liking uh, but anyway um, I, I hope everyone enjoyed this video um, please let me know if you want more of this video and hey if you want to like and subscribe I don't want to be that type of guy but it, it's there <laughs>